top marks for the Scottsdale County Detention Center following their annual evaluation. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, a state crime commission field inspector has given the Scotts Bluff County Detention Center a positive review in the latest annual evaluation of the facility. According to the report issued last month and recently received by county officials, the detention center was found to be in full compliance with state jail standards. Sheriff Mark Overman says the credit goes to an outstanding staff at the facility. We have just got outstanding staff and I would give a lot of credit to Vonnie Cotant. Uh, you know, we put her in charge of the day-to-day -day operations and she's, she's just a star. And we've got a lot of stars over there. there. There's a lot of very dedicated people that do a great job. The evaluation will be reviewed by the State Jail Standard Board later this month. Well, some physical signs of progress for the Midwest Theater's 75th anniversary and marquee project will become apparent soon as the organization has paused programming for two weeks. According to Executive Director Billy Estes, the public is invited to watch from a distance as decommission of the old marquee starts tomorrow and will continue for a number of days with parking restrictions and traffic rerouting expected. Starting sometime early Tuesday morning, you know, there's going to go, uh, a crane will be going up and throughout the day uh, the, primary, the primary removal will occur uh, mostly on Tuesday. They're going to start with the letter boards and then kind of slowly uh, work their way and try to figure out how it was installed because we don't know the order that it was installed and so they kind of have to work backwards uh, and, and kind of do a little bit of investigation as that comes off and then take it off in pieces. The three quarter of a million dollar project includes replacing the original 76 year old marquee with a new one using the latest in LED technology and more weather resistant building materials, the restoration of an old original lobby mural and other changes. Pieces of the original exterior marquee will be preserved for possible future use inside the theater. Reinstallation of the new marquee will take place in the fall at a date contingent on construction schedules, which includes sidewalk replacement and stucco treatments. The Midwest Skyview Drive-In Theater will remain th open throughout the summer season. A little more news right after this. At Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you take advantage of every adventure. We know you have plans, goals, and dreams. Let us help you with them. Whether it is building, buying, or renovating, we have the home loan or home equity line of credit to fit your needs. Stop in and see us at Platte Valley Bank and let us help make your dreams a reality. You belong here. Platte Valley Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Welcome back. Out of 11 petition drives proposed ahead of the November general election, the Nebraska Secretary of State's office says signatures were turned in for only four of the potential ballot questions by Thursday's deadline. Deputy Secretary of State Wayne Baina confirms to KNB News that in addition to petitions gradually raising the minimum wage and the two medical cannabis initiatives supported by Nebraskans for medical marijuana, Signatures were also turned in by backers of a proposed constitutional amendment that would require voter ID. The first three of those questions are statutory, 
meaning each would have to have about 87,000 valid signatures to make the November ballot. But the voter ID question needs just under 124,000 for certification. The Secretary of State's office is now going over petitions for all four questions to determine if they've met the threshold to be considered by voters in the general election. When well, Nebraska Republicans fired their longtime party chairman at a contentious state convention this past weekend, highlighting divisions inside the party between establishment party members and those who supported former President Donald Trump. According to the Nebraska Examiner, most other state party leaders resigned after convention delegates voted Saturday to remove Chairman Dan Welch. Republicans were sharply divided during the spring's gubernatorial primary battle between two conservative candidates, the eventual winner, Jim Pillen, and businessman Charles Herbster, who was endorsed by Trump. Welch, who led the party for the past eight years, said he thought the disputes were related to the primary. And Nebraska Republican State Senator Mike Flood will officially join the U.S. House on Tuesday when he's sworn in to fill the seat of disgraced former U.S. Representative Jeff Fortenberry. Flood, a former speaker of the Nebraska legislature, will take his oath of office at the U.S. Capitol building. Flood defeated Democrat Patty Panzing Brooks in a special election to represent the state's first congressional district, which includes Lincoln and dozens of smaller communities. Fortenberry, a Republican, resigned back in March shortly after a California jury found him guilty of charges that he lied to federal investigators about illegal campaign donations from a Nigerian billionaire. Flood will hold the seat until at least January, where he'll face Pans and Brooks again in November. Well, still to come, Chris Cottrell in with the latest from the world of sports. KNEB.TV News will be back right after this. For the streamers, for the gamers, for the long distance video call makers, for the ones who don't want to miss out on the fiber things in life, they have Allo. Allo Fiber Internet keeps you connected with fast, reliable service and 24 seven support. So you can always get the ultimate experience. No hidden fees, no expiration dates, and no contracts. Experience the fiber things in life with Allo's super fast internet. Visit us at allofiber.com slash fiber things. Culture trumps everything else. In my years, I've never worked for a company that treats people the way this one does. It is my passion for agriculture that brought me here in the first place, but not only that, there's a huge uh, family-oriented atmosphere within the 21st century equipment. I love working for 21st. They found something in me that I didn't know in myself. An intern to where I'm at now is such a great opportunity, and that is what this company is about. Now, sports from the FNBO Sports Desk. FNBO, the great big small bank. Time to check some of our headlines here as we open up the sports week. Of course, this time of year, it's so baseball-centric, and that's the starting point for today. Legion baseball-wise tonight, you've got Garing Platte Valley Companies. They're in Chapel, set to take on Buckley in a doubleheader. Jeff Kelly's going to have that twin bill here on the network. Tomorrow, I'll be at Powers Field in Cheyenne for the Zephyrs and Post 6. Now, the Class B Juniors Tournament is continuing in Sydney early this week. Garing BNC Steel, they went 0-2 and had their season come 
come to an end with losses to Shadron and Ogallala. Alliance waits on the winner of the Sydney and Shadron game today for the championship matchup. That'll be sent for tomorrow. Area tournaments for the Z's and Express will start next Friday. The Gehring Seniors playing in the postseason too. Fridays from now. For the Western Nebraska Pioneers, it's a wraparound series continuing tonight out in Caldwell, Idaho against the Canyon County Spuds. The Spuds have won two of the first three games in that set, including last night a 4-3 win with two runs to walk it off in the ninth inning. Tonight and tomorrow in Idaho for the Pios before returning home for a two-series five-game homestand starting this weekend. And over this past weekend, the annual Don Childs 5K run, part of the Oregon Trail Days festivities, really no surprise as far as the winners are concerned. Nick Kazire, the men's victory, Sarah Vaughn winning in the ladies race, full results for all runners and divisions. You can find it all posted right now on the website. That will be it for today. The latest from right here at the FNBO Sports Desk. I'm Chris Cottrell. Are you looking for the perfect place to hold a wedding, family reunion, holiday office party, or business meeting? Well, look no further. The Hampton Inn and Suites Hotel and Conference Center is just the place for you. We're a full service banquet facility that can host up to 400 of your guests. Stop in and see our spacious open concept meeting rooms and begin planning your special event or family gathering today. Let us do the work for you so you can enjoy your guests. For personal service, stop by the Hampton Inn and Suites front desk. Let's take a look what's happening on today's community calendar. The Community Calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. First State Bank is now Riverstone Bank. Community strong with the same people you know and trust. Fly United Airlines operated by SkyWest with Western Nebraska Regional Airport. United is dedicated to going the extra mile for you with daily flights to and from Denver along with a commitment to excellent service. Reserve your flight today and remember United miles can be earned and redeemed with your flights. 
while at the airport, stop and enjoy authentic Italian food at Roma Italian Restaurant. Plus, Hertz Thrifty Car Rental is there for your car rental needs. Make life easier, relax, and get on board with Western Nebraska Regional Airport. At Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you take advantage of every adventure. We know you have plans, goals, and dreams. Let us help you with them. Whether you are just starting the business you have always imagined or looking to grow your existing one, we have a business loan to fit your needs. Stop in and see us at Platte Valley Bank and let us help make your dreams a reality. You belong here. Platte Valley Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. And finally tonight, the Northfield Retirement Community is expanding. Today, a ribbon cutting ceremony was held just north of the residency in Scottsbluff for their new independent living housing units. Northfield CEO Bill Johnson says the 1,500 square foot units will feature two bedrooms, two baths, and have attached garages. We've got a, a new endeavor. This is another option. As, as we approach 50 years in business in two years, we're looking at options available uh, and, and uh, we're listening to what the community wants and needs. This project is also a dream becoming a reality. Shirley Ruff was on hand and says her late husband Fred proposed an idea like this for Northfield years ago when he first was on the board. And he tried way back at the first beginnings of his uh, being on the board. And the board wouldn't go along with him. He wanted to start with the cottages out here and they just wouldn't go along with him. Construction on the duplexes are expected to be completed by next spring. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.